UBC is great when it comes to psychology. It's ranked amongst the top 20 in the world and amongst the top 5 in Canada. It's very important to keep updated with important dates and deadlines. This isn't just limited to the general university application, but also with the scholarship application deadline. Admission to UBC is not considered on a first-come, first-served basis. The strength of your application score depends on your GPA as well as your personal statement. This is the approximate distribution of psychology students across both science and arts programs. Generally speaking, Bachelor of Science programs are much more competitive than arts programs, so fewer first-year students applying for these programs are admitted to every year. Arts programs don't have a selective application process, and all you need to do is declare a major or minor in psychology, and you're in. Remember that your choices aren't limited to the ones in the chart. A major is the subject that you study and take for the majority of your degree. To be a psychology major means that you have to take a certain amount of upper-level courses in order to graduate. You can also take a double major, which is basically completing interdisciplinary studies in two majors. A minor is like a mini-major. You have an interest in the subject, but not enough to have it to be your major. An honors program is a more intense version of the major program. Besides the fact that there's more courses that you have to take in order to graduate, it's also highly competitive with only 15 students accepted per year. Being in an honors program can give you strong foundations in research and prepare you for graduate psychology programs. UBC offers first year transfer credits if you took the IP, AP, or A levels in high school. Getting transfer credits means that you get exemptions from having to take first year courses. The most common first year credit transfers you get will be for English, psychology, and a second language course if you've taken one. Planning your courses can be very stressful. Keep in mind there's a lot of flexibility. You can get ahead with your second year requirements by taking Psychology 217 during the summer term, right after the end of first year. Or you can finish your science and literature, literature requirements in your first year itself and focus more on other courses throughout the year. I also know students who don't take 217 and 218 in their second year and take it in the third. It's up to you. You will learn more about yourself and what you want as you mature through university. Don't worry, don't stress, this is just an example. What are those requirements? What do you get to learn? What courses do you take? There are so many courses you can take to fulfill those requirements. Because for most of those requirements, all you need are two courses or two, two to four courses. And you can take a wide array of courses. You can scan the QR code and look at all the courses that will fulfill what requirement. So you can look at what literature courses will fulfill the literature requirement, what language courses will fulfill the language requirement, and so on. This is the end of first year. You took Psychology 101 and 102 and you absolutely loved it. If you want a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, just a few clicks away and you declare your major in the Student Service Center. If you're in the Faculty of Science, then this is also your chance to apply for the Behavioral Neuroscience Program. Now you've made it to the second term of second year. You thought about it, so you applied to the Honors Program. And then, it's the end of second year. But you're like, I really like Psychology. You can declare your minor in BA Psychology. If you are a science student, you can also declare your minor in Behavioral Neuroscience. As a student majoring in Behavioral Neuroscience, you can minor in BA Psychology. However, as a major in BA Psychology, you cannot minor in Behavioral Neuroscience. There are different types of courses available in UBC Psychology, each belonging to one of these fields. You have to take courses that belong in all these fields. In Clinical Psychology, you can learn about Abnormal Psychology. In Social Psychology, you'll learn about how different groups interact with each other. In Foundations and Psychometrics, you learn about different ways to measure data. And in Developmental, you learn about Psychology as a Child compared to Psychology as an Adult. And in Cognitive Behavioral Psychology, you learn about how the mind works and you can check out a comprehensive course list by scanning that code. This is how it looks on the SSC when you're planning your courses and browsing through. So some specific higher level example courses that I took include principles of animal behavior uh, where you learn about the underlying biological and psychological mechanisms of primates and other animals um, since they often parallel humans. I'm also currently taking up normal psychology which lets you take in-depth look at mood disorders. And we learn about both biological and psychological models to explain the causes, thus the treatment. Another interesting higher level psych course is cultural psychology. It's really important to look at how cultural differences lead to different psychological behaviors. Psyche is an international honor society whose purpose is to encourage, stimulate, and maintain excellence in academics, as well as advance the science of psychology. You can gain many benefits by being a member, such as several scholarships, research grants, and you will have many networking opportunities, um, as well as opportunities for professional development in all areas. And um, you can enjoy a lifetime membership once you become a member. 
Um, so, Psychology Student Association, or PSA, is a student-run organization aiming to engage students from any faculty who are interested in psychology. PSA provides a variety of events and services such as CV workshops, meet your professor, student faculty social, psychology undergraduate research conference, and the year-end gala. Um, the UBC Undergraduate Journal of Psychology is an annual student-run and peer-reviewed journal. Their goal is to provide a platform for undergraduate students to showcase their research, allowing them an invaluable opportunity to have a published academic paper in their early careers. Psychology is all about research, and that's exactly why UBC is full of research opportunities. At the end of your research methods course, you present the experiment you did with your lab groups on the poster night, while Psych 2018 gives you the permission to do research. Rex is a great program where they pair an undergraduate students with graduate students to come up with their own research. You get a completion of certification, which means you can officially put it on your resume and graduate with a research experience under your belt. For other research opportunities, consider applying as a research assistant to psychology labs at UBC. As with upper-level psychology programs, there are labs for each area of psychology. Most labs require you to have prior experience working in a laboratory setting, but will have specific requirements or exemptions listed in their application forms. For the comprehensive list of labs within UBC, please scan the QR code. UBC also presents other unique opportunities for its students. Go Global lets you take courses in universities abroad. It gives you the valuable experience to make new friends and explore other cultures, whilst also contributing to your overall credits. Co-op lets you work full-time while maintaining your student status. Graduating with a work experience really sets you apart, all while enriching your classroom learning experience to the next level by allowing you to apply it to real work situations.